In another part of the city, a man is issuing orders to his subordinates. A dark, sinister-looking man whose tight-lipped smile has no mirth in it. His business is creating spirits. Spirits of those who have departed. Joe, that last batch of cloth you bought me was certainly cheesy. My old nightshirt would make better ectoplasm than that junk. Yeah, but you see, boss... Never I... mind the alibis. Fade it in and get something thinner. Bart. Yes, sir. You still recording famous voices off the air? Yes, sir. Okay. Be my secretary and get a list of the 400 best families. Yes, sir. Call on them one at a time. See if you can sell them the idea of having each voice in the family recorded as a memento for their relatives after they pass on. Make copies of each. We can use them in our seances. I'll do it right away, sir. Good. And as you go out, tell Sweeney and maintenance to order two dozen more loudspeaker sets through my radio stores. Fifty dozen crystal balls and 75 cases of playing cards. Right away, sir. Did you send for me, Chief? Yes. Now, look, my apple cheek little trigger man. Professor Windrip phoned me that he has reason to suspect that some photographs were taken at his seance tonight by Patrolman Dan Garrett. The negatives may still be in his possession, or they may be in the possession of Dr. Franz that runs that little apothecary shop. I want those photographs. Okay, Chief, I'll get them. If you meet with resistance... Let your conscience be your guide. I got you, Chief. My trigger finger's awful nervous tonight. It must be the weather. The professor calling, L.G. Show him in. Oh, hello, L.G. This is certainly a terrible state of affairs. When did the cops release you? Just now. Someone bailed us all out, and I came right to you. I'll bet you left a trail a mile wide. No. I changed trains three times in the subway. Walked through Ralph's department store and then took a taxi here. Good. Well, what do you advise me to do? My business is ruined. Your business? <laughs> you should have thought of that before you killed John Henley. I killed him? You mean William? I mean you. William wouldn't have the nerve. But William hated his cousin. He was sitting right next to him. And, and... so were you. What makes you think so? A little bird told me. I've got spies down at police headquarters. They heard the questioning of your people by the police. Oh. Yes. Oh. They said you were playing up to old man Henley. Well, Now, I'm... say, you aren't figuring on trying to double-cross me on this, are you? Why, no, LG, I assure you. You'd I... better not if you know what's good for you. Now, what about those two policemen, Manigan and Garrett? They'll be taken care of. When the case comes up for trial... They won't be there to testify. Yes, but the photographs. I'm sure I heard the click of a camera during the seance. They're almost dark, wasn't it? Pitch black. Okay. Then you don't have to worry. I'll leave everything to me. Now, what do you think I'd better do now? Go out to your place and play dumb. I'll be out there later, as soon as I've had a talk with William Henley. He'll probably spend a few days on his uncle's yacht. In the meantime, I've got my men guarding everybody concerned. I imagine the Blue Beetle will stick his nose into this. And if he does, it'll be just too bad for Mr. Blue Beetle. I don't think you killed your cousin John. I didn't. I swear I didn't. Well, okay. Now, you just take it easy. Lay up to your uncle and you'll be the white-haired boy. He always believed anything his son Rodney told him. But this murder, what about We're that? We're going we... to let Professor Windrip take the rap. He's all washed up with us. I see. Later, you will introduce your uncle to another medium. and We'll go to work on him again. In your favor. You'll be his heir. Yes, but he may live a long time, and I need money now. My creditors are hounding now, me, and I now, can't wait. Now, take it easy. Take it easy. Just as soon as he makes a will in your favor, he'll meet with an accident. You mean... He'll what? be talking with his dead son, Rodney, direct. Very clever scheme, but it won't work. The Blue, Blue Beetle. Beetle. Yes, the Blue Beetle, and he's going to nip. Shall I let him have it, L.G.? Kill him. Go ahead, shoot. Your bullets can't injure the blue beetle. 
But this filet pinwheel. Good work, Gus. Good work. You throw a mean belaying pin. He's off like a light. What'll I do with him? Tie him up. Weight his body with an anchor and toss him overboard. Okay, LG. Well, Mr. Blue Beagle, you're gone for a nice swim. <clears throat> and you ain't coming back. Say, aren't you a, a bit ruthless, LG? In my racket, you have to be. Now, you be a good boy and we'll all be rich. Well, what are you going to do now? I'm going ashore. Professor Windrip is going to have a caller and get a big surprise. All right, Gherkin. I'm going to get some sleep. This has been a very trying evening. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. Did you dismantle and hide the phonograph equipment and records? Yes, sir. Everything's been taken care of. Uh, will you be sleeping late in the morning, sir? Yes, Gherkin. Uh, call me about noon. Uh, very good, sir. What? Good heavens. Who can that be at this time of night? Well, uh, I'll see, sir. It may be Mr. L.G., as you call him. Uh, good evening, sir. The, the master's just retiring. Well, sir. he'll but, uh, see me. Oh. Oh, there you are. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, what have you found out, L.G.? The Blue Beetle paid a visit to Henley's yacht while I was talking with William Henley. Well, how did you get rid of him? He's bathing in the sound with a 50-pound anchor tied to his feet. Great heaven. Yes, he was in the way. Just as you're in my way, Professor Windrup. What, what do you mean? You're all through, Professor. You almost cleared our racket. I can't wait for the law to take its course. Besides, you might spill the beans. Oh, no. I'm I... taking no chances. No. I'm going to close your mouth right... Drop that John L.G. or I'll blast you with my magic ray. The Blue Beetle. Yes, the Blue Beetle. You must be a strong swimmer, Blue Beetle. I am, and I learned a few tricks from Houdini. Otherwise, I'd be lying at the bottom of the sound. Get him, Gherkin. Get him from behind. Oh, no, you don't. Not this time, Gherkin. The Blue Beetle's on the alert. And here's one for you, Professor Windrip. Murderers. Now I'll take that gun, L.G. Certainly, Blue Beetle. Here it is, right in the... <laughs> Just a little jujitsu. Now I've got the gun. What are you going to do? You've got nothing on me. Oh, no? I swam back to the yacht after I freed myself from the anchor rope and had a little talk with William. Was he surprised to see me? He's going to talk and talk plenty. He can't prove who killed John Henley. But the photographs Dan Garrett took at the seance can. What do you know about those photographs? The Blue Beetle knows everything. Now listen, Blue Beetle. Those photographs will never be shown at any trial. Pudgy has seen to that. What do you mean? Pudgy's my trigger man. I sent him to interview Dan Garrett's friend, Dr. Franz, the chemist. If the photographs are there, he'll get them or else. Open this door. Well, Mr. L.G., the law's caught up with you. Your racket's smashed and you'll burn along with Professor Windrush. Not yet, I won't. I'll cheat the chair with this poison. No, you don't. The law's going to send you and the murderous Professor Windrup where you can't cause any more harm. All right, now, all right. Reach for the ceiling. Well, if it ain't the Blue Beetle... Professor Windrip and the Limey Servant. What a haul. And uh, who's this? That's L.G., the ringleader of the gang. He just tried to take poison and I hit him. Here, Manigan, catch this gun. What? Well, okay, Blue Beetle. Sorry to leave so suddenly. Hey, wait a minute, Blue Beetle. You're under arrest. Well, hanged if the Blue Beetle didn't dive out of the window. Well, boys, slip the handcuffs on these babies and we'll take them along. I'll catch the blue beetle the next time. And so the blue beetle caught and turned over to the police several racketeers. But what about Doc Franz and the photographs? What has happened to them? Has Pudgy carried out the orders of his chief the infamous L.G.? Let's hurry back to the little apothecary shop of Dr. Franz. Doc! Doc Franz! Where are you? Hello, Danny. Why, what's your hurry? Oh, are you all right? Never felt better in my life. But, but, the gunman. Did, 
the pudgy... Uh, rosy-cheeked, uh, rather confident gentleman called earlier tonight. Uh, I was in my laboratory at the time. Yeah, well, well, what happened? He mentioned something about some photographs. It was rather insistent that I give them to him. Uh, well, did he... Uh, did yes, he... yes, uh, he pointed a gun at me. What did you do? Squirted a syringe full of concentrated ammonia in his eyes. Oh, good. Where is he now? I tied him up to keep him from playing with my chemicals in there. Oh, that's great. And the photographs are safe? Everything's under control. Ah, fine. Those photographs will convict Professor Windrup of young Henley's murder, and William's testimony will take care of LG. Uh, what does LG stand for, Danny? Well, according to William, LG stands for live ghost, a man behind the spirit. Well, if you'll excuse me, Doc, I'm going to turn in. The Blue Beetles had a very busy night. And so all loose threads were tied together. And another racket smashed, thanks to Dan Garrett, Mike Manigan, Dr. Franz, and the Blue Beetle. What new adventure awaits the Blue Beetle? This question will be answered in the next episode of the Blue Beetle. And now, here's the Blue Beetle himself to say a few words. The moral of this story is that there's no honor among thieves. In other words, never become associated with anyone in any endeavor or plan that is not absolutely straightforward. If you do, you can expect to be double-crossed or become the cat's paw or the fall guy. Remember to always look up, never down, and to associate only with those persons you can respect. The Blue Beetle is a copyrighted Fox feature appearing in Mystery Men Comics magazine and the Blue Beetle magazine. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. Don't forget to listen in to... The Blue Beetle.